Hey everyone, I just finished editing the video today. I just wanted to say real quick, it is a bit fusion heavy. So I take some time explaining conceptually how things work before going into the actual method that I use because it's a bit weird. So if you're here to learn, watch from the beginning. If you want just the answer, jump to this timestamp here. And if you're looking for presets you can just use now, check the description. Enjoy the video. By far, the most common question I get is, how do you do your caption? Well, there are essentially two problems to solve with this. How do you add them? And how do you make them? This is the how do you make them side of things. If you're curious about how you can convert your video's audio to become text plus nodes, that's a separate video. I'll leave a link here, here, somewhere in the description for you to go check that out. But what we're gonna tackle today is how do you create reusable animated text plus nodes because there is a glaring problem with doing things the standard way in DaVinci Resolve. For instance, in one of my previous videos, we talked about how you make just a very simple pop animation, right? Well, the problem that you're gonna run into is say for instance, we have this example clip and you use whatever conversion method floats your boat. What you're gonna end up finding is that on our first text plus node, we have we have the same animation that we were working with before, but as soon as I go to the rest of the text plus nodes, it's not there. And that's because these keyframes that we put in, the keyframes that we've created live only on these first 12 frames. So if I were to cut this clip like we did, we lose those frames. It, it's not gonna reset that frame count. You see that we're starting on frame 17 now instead of frame zero. So this is the problem that we're gonna to solve today. If you do not have the time or the willpower to go ahead and set these up, I totally understand. That's why I've gone ahead and I've actually made a captioned pack for you to download. There's a free version that comes with one very simple, very effective pop in, pop out caption. And then there is also a paid set that comes with a few variations that you can use for any of your videos. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm working on a 60 frames per second timeline because I work with gamers and gamers like to make my life harder than it needs to be. But the only reason I say that is because when I start talking about frame numbers and specific frame numbers, it's probably gonna be a little bit different from you. So you might have to scale accordingly. Regardless of the frame rate that you're on, we are going to need to bring in a text plus title. It's gonna live in your effects menu under titles. You want text plus, make sure you do not bring in the text uh, title, the text title is gonna limit the number of options that you have. We want text plus. Now you can go ahead and make this as long as you'd like to be. Uh, mine by default is two seconds long. Again, it really doesn't matter. But once you have your text plus node on your timeline, you can either right click, hit open in Fusion page, or you can go down to the bottom and hit Fusion. And that's gonna take you into the Fusion page. Now, if you have never used the Fusion page, it's going to be okay, listen to me. We're not gonna be scared of the Fusion page. I'm gonna be right here with you the entire time you can do this. Now, I am gonna assume that you've maybe opened this page once before and you're kind of familiar with the lay of the land. If not, I made a few videos that um, break down the Fusion page a little bit more in depth, or there's some great resources out there that'll do full walkthroughs of the Fusion page. I'm just gonna assume you've opened it once before, and we're gonna go from there. Now, when you bring in your text plus node in the Fusion page, it actually starts with a template node connected to the media out node. And the template node is a pretty cool one because it comes with all sorts of nifty little settings that you can use for your text plus node. Now, remember the problem that we're trying to solve today is that we want our animation to reset or we want it to be non keyframe dependent. And I would say there are two main ways that you can do this within DaVinci Resolve. The first is using anim curves, and I'm not going to cover anim curves in this video because I think they deserve a video on their own, and Patrick Sterling has an amazing video covering it. If you haven't stumbled upon Patrick's channel before, he's an incredible creator, and he really gets into the nitty gritty of all things fusion, so I would highly, highly recommend checking that out. But the second option, the thing that I'm gonna cover today is the key frame stretcher. But before we can use the keyframe stretcher, we need to come up with our own animation for it to stretch, I guess. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna keep it pretty straightforward and simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select our template node and I'm just gonna have a pop in and a pop out animation. So starting on frame zero, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a keyframe. And then again, because I'm working in 60 frames per second, 60 frames is one second for me. So I'd like this animation to be pretty quick, so maybe I'm gonna go 15 frames forward. 
Again, scale according to whatever works best for you. And I'm gonna set another keyframe. This is gonna be our in animation. If I go back to the beginning frame by hitting this left arrow here, or you know, you could just scrub back over. Uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring our size down just a little bit. Let's make this easy numbers to work with. So let's make our first one 0 0.05 on frame zero. And then let's go over to the ending keyframe and let's make this 0.1. So it's double in size. So if I were to play this through, see our size increases to be 0.1. And there's a few ways that we can clean this up to make it look a little bit more snappy. If I open up my spline menu up top here and I select our template node, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and expand this menu. I'm gonna select our two points and I'm gonna hit F to flatten. Now what I'm gonna do is I want this to accelerate pretty quickly and then decelerate at the end. So I am going to drag that bottom handle up so that we get a pretty quick pop in. Now you can do some fun things with this where like you could even bring this handle up just a little bit and, or you could bring this out and you can bring this up and over so that it almost overshoots your animation. So that way it kind of, you know, like, resets back in and that's what that looks like it's pretty quick but that's all we want we you know we're not looking for a real complicated title animation this is just a caption that we're going to be using now the next thing that we're going to do is we want our out animation and you don't have to do this but a lot of you guys are going to want some kind of animation that leads out into the next caption per se now when we do our out animation here's where some things might not be super straightforward if this was your first time doing something like this, you might think, well, okay, if I want some kind of out animation, so let's say we want this thing to like reseed in size or uh, collapse, pop down, we gotta go to the end and keyframe it there. That's not how the keyframe stretcher works. So in order to understand where we should put this, let's go ahead and open up our keyframe stretcher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit control space and I start typing in keyframe stretcher. And this is the node that we're gonna wanna work with. Go ahead and enter. Now what a keyframe stretcher node does is essentially that it pushes and stretches out your keyframes to fit at the very end and the very beginning of whatever composition you're working with. And if you set it up correctly, no matter how long your composition is, what the keyframe stretcher node will do is it's going to push those frames to the beginning and end every single time. And it works just like this. The first two that we have are source start and source end, meaning where does your animation start and where does it end? So for us, we're gonna start on frame zero. We don't exactly have our end point yet because we have not done our out animation. Now this bottom sliding bar that kind of looks like the right in and right out property if you use the text plus note before, all this little slider bar says is, hey, I want you to stop animating after you hit this frame and then once you get to the end of the clip, restart it based off of this frame. So let me show you what I mean by this. I'm gonna leave our keyframe stretcher node just for now. I'm gonna go back to the template node, okay? And right now, all we have is our in animation. So keeping our keyframe stretcher in mind, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a gap for it to hold our animation for. Now, continue, just continue to bear with me because I think this part is a little bit conceptually uh, tricky to get used to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start our out animation at least one frame after our in animation ends. Now you could do this at frame 16, you could do it at frame 20, you could do it at frame 62, it doesn't matter. There just has to be some space for it to hold our animation. For the purpose of this video and for clarity's sake, I'm gonna do it on frame 20. You could do it at frame 16, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna do it on frame 20 and I'm going to set a keyframe on our size and I'm gonna go, let's go 10 frames forward. Let's keep things nice and round. And I'm just gonna decrease our size back down to 0.05. And I'm gonna do a similar thing where I'm gonna smooth out our splines just a little bit. So I have our template selected again. We're looking at the size property. I got our spline window set up. I'm gonna drag and select our final two endpoints. And all I'm going to do is hit F to flatten them out. And I'm gonna drag the handle for our rightmost point up. So that way we have some acceleration out. Now, if I were to play this at the beginning, this is what this is gonna look like. Right, so we have a pop in and then sucks on out. 
And if I zoom in on our spline window, this region right here, starting on frame 15, going through 20, that is going to be our stretch start and our stretch end region. Hopefully that makes sense because we want, we want to stretch out our animation in this region. So if I were to focus in on our animation window right here and jot down what I think are gonna be the points that we're gonna use for the source start, the source end, and then this stretching region, go ahead and zoom back in on this. Our source start is on frame zero right here. So our source start is gonna be frame zero and our end is gonna be 30. That's the end of our animation region, right? So source end is gonna be 30. And our stretching zone is gonna be between frame 15 and frame 20. So the stretch goes from frame 15 to 20. So now all I need to do is enter those into our keyframe stretcher node. So I have this selected now. Our source start is at zero. Our source end is at 30. And now our stretching region is gonna be from frame 15 to frame 20. Now all we have to do is insert this stretcher into our fusion pipeline. And I'm gonna do it by holding shift, hovering over until our line changes colors and inserting. And if we've done this correctly, we're gonna see some magic. So we should still see our in animation at the very beginning, right? Because that's it should be at the beginning of our, <laughs> our animation. But when we hit frame 20, what should happen is we shouldn't see anything until we hit the end of our comp. So if I scrub through at frame 20, it's holding our animation and it should, we should see it at frame 110. We should begin to see our out animation. Boom. And this principle in itself will let you do some incredible things in the fusion page. Now what I can do is I can stretch this out to be as short as I'd like it to be. We should have our in animation at the beginning and at the end, right? In, out. If I stretch this out to be, I don't know, what is this, two seconds or something? In an animation at the beginning, out animation at the end. But if you stop there, you are still gonna have one big problem. We can now stretch out our animation as long as we'd like to, but if I were to start cutting this like you would to do your captioning, you still see we lose our animation. And that is again because our keyframe stretcher isn't seeing the beginning of our animation. So we have to do something sneaky that uses this same concept. Now the reason we didn't start with this method first is because it's really important to understand how the keyframe stretcher works. Because what's gonna happen is when we start doing things, edge, things are gonna start getting funky very quickly. But I just want you to remember how we approach this initially. So to set up our pop animation so that it works no matter how we cut it. What I'm gonna do, we're gonna delete our keyframe stretcher node and we're gonna reset our animation. And that's because what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually add the keyframe stretcher modifier or the key stretcher modifier. So if I were to hover over and right click on our size, go to modify with, there is a modifier called the key stretcher and it works exactly the same as the keyframe stretcher node, except we're applying it to a specific property. And now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to apply it to the size property. I'm going to add a transform node, specifically the non XF transform node, because it has all of our different position settings already split up nicely. The reason I do that is because say, for instance, I want to make a caption with a different size. Well, if I have keyframes attached to that size property already, it's going to be really funky to start changing things to make it bigger and bigger and smaller. Whereas if I apply our animation, a transform node, the animation is completely independent and separate of our text settings. Now, what I'm gonna recommend you do is before we add this modifier, make sure you are on whatever frame you wanna start this animation on. You don't have to do this, but it's just gonna make your life a little bit cleaner if you do. So I'm on frame zero. I'm gonna right click on the zoom property, modify with key stretcher. And what that's gonna do again is unlock our modifier tab and we have the exact same properties that we did with the keyframe stretcher node. Now here's the order of operations that we're gonna take. What I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and set up your animation first and then do the keyframe stretching second. So what I'm gonna do is I am starting on frame zero. I'm gonna do the exact same thing we, we did before. Go over to frame 15, put in a keyframe, go over to frame 20, keyframe, frame 30, 
keyframe. And on frame 30, I'm gonna change our size to 0.5. Go back to the beginning frame and change our size. So I'm on frame zero right now to 0.5. Uh, you may have noticed that in our keyframe preview window, you're already starting to see something funky because for some reason, we have a keyframe indicator uh, like a little bit before frame 28. And that's because the keyframe stretcher modifier is trying to preview where those keyframes are gonna be located after you've stretched these animations. With that said, let's go ahead and get our curve set up right. So I have the keyframes property selected. I'm on my transform node still. Let's go ahead and select all four of our uh, frames. I'm gonna hit F to flatten them. Grab this bottom one. We're gonna do the exact same kind of spline we did before. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of zoom through this part. And now before I play this and preview it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set up our key stretcher modifier exactly how we did before. Source start is zero, source end is 30, and our stretching region is from oh, frame 15 to frame 20. And like I said before, things are gonna to start to look a little bit funky in the preview windows, but if you've done it correctly, we should have the exact same animation that we did before where we have our pop in in the beginning and then it holds until the end. So let's go ahead and play it. In, hold, 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 out. In, hold, 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 out. Now, because we've hooked essentially our key stretcher to this one property and it's not looking at nodes ahead of it in specific frames, what's gonna happen is when I go to the edit page, on first glance, it looks exactly like we had before. But what I can do is I can start cutting up our text plus node anywhere and you're already beginning to see it is going to reset our animation every time boom 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 it might not be a bad idea to use the keyframe stretcher node just like we did before and test your animations before you start adding the modifiers because because for this example it, we got a pretty simple animation so things work pretty smoothly but things like i said can get very weird very quickly so so hopefully that helps if you are curious about how to convert your audio to text plus nodes go ahead and click this video here or if you're interested in downloading those captions i'll leave a link to the shop in the description but i appreciate you guys and i'll catch you in the next one peace